Hi there, I'm Java Jim with First Line Equipment. Welcome to our YouTube channel if you're new. Welcome back if you've seen my videos before. Today, we're gonna go over some general tech support on how to diagnose your espresso machine electrically, if there's any type of electrical problems. Now, I do have to give fair warning. This is at your own risk for any type of damage or personal injury. We hold no responsibility whatsoever here at First Line. If you disagree with this or these statements, please stop watching this video at this point because we assume no responsibility whatsoever if you get injured or create any damage to your home or to your office or to your facilities or God forbid yourself. So I will try to go over as many precautions as possible, but if you disagree, please stop watching at this point. I do have to give you that statement. Now, if you're continuing, uh, what we're gonna go over is how to do some diagnosis on uh, espresso machines. And one of the tools that you will need is a multimeter or, and or a continuity tester. A continuity tester is gonna check to see if um, Electricity can pass through from point A to point B, uh, but won't tell you the resistance uh, and also will not tell you the voltage. So you might need a voltmeter on top of a continuity tester, but the best is really a multimeter and a multimeter that has a digital screen. Now this one here uh, from the company, I'm not gonna mention the name, uh, is probably about 15 years old. This thing gets hammered in our tech support area and it's still working. Uh, we just have to replace the batteries. Uh, basically, you're gonna have uh, two connectors here or terminals here to do the testing. Uh, here's an El Cheapo one right here. Again, digital display. What you're looking for is the voltage symbols, uh, the A symbol for amperage, and also some type of speaker sound. The speaker sound is kind of important um, to check for continuity. So. Uh, me personally, I like this brand here, so we're gonna use this today, but uh, just look for that. And then also when you're wrapping the wires, okay, try not to crisscross them here like this because it ruins them. Uh, we just replaced them on this one right here not too long ago, so probably la they lasted about 14 years. So this one is nice and simple, uh, and you're probably wondering why I have the purple shirt on. Uh, the reason is so you can't uh, mix me up with the wires in the machine. So right now there are no purple wires that I see uh, in the machine. So that's why I'm wearing purple, just to let you know. So here we have for volts and we have the squiggly line on the V here, which is for AC. Uh, that means it's an electrical appliance plugged into 110 volt AC, which is your outlet. DC is your batteries. If you wanna check your batteries uh, on this particular one, that's DC right there. But uh, that's where we're gonna check for voltage. When you're checking for voltage, that's where you can injure yourself because you can get electrocuted. So be really, really careful. Uh, and I have two machines here. One is the Lilith Victoria, the other one Bezerra Hobby. The Lilith Victoria is not plugged in, so I'll show you how to check for continuity. On the Hobby, this is live. It's plugged in and it's hot. Okay, when I mean hot, it means it's getting juice, electrical power, and that's where you can hurt yourself damage a machine or damage your surroundings, cause a fire, yada, yada, yada. So uh, here we have uh, a horseshoe, which is basically uh, the amperage. Here we have the sound symbol for continuity. Uh, and then we have some other symbols here. So um, just to let you know when you have one of these. So I can't train you on every different multimeter out there. You may have to read the instructions or if you go to your mass market store, uh, basically in either an appliance store or um, um, a home improvement store, they can explain it a little better for you. They're the ones making the sale. We don't sell these. So they're the ones making a sale, I'm, let them explain it or read the manual. So we're gonna now get started on the non-hot machine, which is the cool machine not plugged in. I have the multimeter uh, with the horseshoe there. Uh, as you can see, there's a little resistance there. But here's our heating element post. So if the heating element goes bad, so we could check that. Again, the machine is not plugged in. We have about 14, uh, close to 14. 
Uh, heating elements usually range anywhere between eight and as I've seen as high as 20, but under 18 is better. So if you see that, we got the two wires connected. Now, again, machine's not hot, it's not plugged in. I can get in here and I can check the two here. Now we're at 13.8. The reason I disconnect the wires is because in case there's a short going around somewhere else, it may pick that up. So now the heating element is good at 13.8. Okay, so to check, to make sure the heating element's not dead, uh, this is a way to check. If I put this in beeping mode, okay, I can do the same thing and it beeps, it tells me that it's good. Okay, so if the filament in the heating element busted, we would not get that continuity or the beep. So let me just go back here. Now, um, actually, let me go back to the sound, which is the little symbol there. The other way to check the heat element, if the heating element melted down and the filament is exposed, where the electricity goes through the filament to heat, and it's exposed to water, what will end up happening is you could touch one side on the terminal. Again, wires not connected. One side and to the boiler wall or to the metal. If you get a beep, that means the uh, heating element melted down. And typically, if, uh, I ask customers to plug it into a GFI outlet, which has a test reset button. If the heating element melted down, it would trip the GFI. But if you don't have a GFI, the multimeter is going to tell you. Now, you do need to check on both sides because sometimes you check one side, there's nothing, but you check the other side, there's something. See if I touch boiler wall to boiler wall, I'm getting something. Okay, the machine is grounded, so you're gonna get that, but you should have nothing from the terminals. Okay, if you see the ceramic here, if that's cracked, uh, or, the, or right down in here, uh, there's some insulation. Uh, if that's broken, uh, you may get from here to the, bo to the boiler wall. Okay, so that's for the heating element. Uh, you could do the same thing for switches if you figure out which way the switches work. Okay, but here's the safety thermostat. Let me take those wires. Sometimes the safety thermostat takes a hit from a surge from the power company when they're switching power on their power plants. So we go from here to here. Okay, we're good. If we're not good here, press the push button. If you hear a click, that should reset it. However, if it keeps on clicking, it could mean that your boiler is overheating because it has power uh, and short to ground, which will overheat. So if this keeps on clicking, there may be an issue with the thermostat or with the heating element. So just keep that in mind. This is a single boiler machine. Uh, that's, if you look here, down in here, there is a solenoid valve. It is difficult to, uh, to test for continuity on a solenoid valve. A switch here, uh, so I'll try to get this one off here, and I'll t push this here, put this one in here, okay? Okay, we're not getting anything on, on this particular switch. So maybe I'm not connected right. Let's see here. Nope, nothing there. So sometimes it's a little more difficult with switches, but uh, a lot of times you can check on a switch. And let me see if there's anything else that's holding this up here. There we go. Okay, so the switch is pushed in, it's working. Okay, switch is out. So this switch I have to hold in. Other switches sometimes you don't. So we're good on the switch. So that's how you could check a switch there. Here's the power, okay. Switch. Okay, and if you're gonna remove wires, take pictures, or you can go in through the back end here. So basically, you're gonna check for continuity when the machine is unplugged, or you could check for uh, the ohm resistance uh, as well. So switches can vary all over the place, one to two. They can go up four or five in some cases I've seen. It all depends on the manufacturer and the machine. Uh, you cannot check the pump uh, with this. so. That's an, a thing you cannot do when you're checking front continuity. And again, the same with the solenoid valves. You're not really gonna see the resistance on that. Okay, now we're gonna move over to a live machine. So uh, here we have uh, uh, the Betzera. When I say live, I mean hot, powered on. And we're gonna move over to voltage. 
AC, which you'll see that little symbol right there. And here you have to be really careful because you can uh, do some damage. Uh, a lot of times you could check voltage to ground. So here's your ground wire right even to the body or here's your ground as well. So let me put that on and uh, what we're gonna do, okay, and I don't recommend doing this. Let's shut the power off. Uh, let's move that wire a little bit out. And I told you about purple, this is light purple. So uh, there is a little purple. I kind of gave a little fib before. So let's power the machine on. Let me see if this is on. And let's hit the coffee switch, okay? And here, we're gonna put this here. And as you can see, we have 120 volts to ground. So we know power is coming. So to check power, you would put one on ground and one on the other side. Then I can go to the other leg as well. Or I could take, this is really tight in here. I could take one to one side and one to the other and see if voltage is coming through uh, as well. So, so to check the heating element with live time, we could do with the ground, but we could do one side and the other going to the heating element. And right now we're getting 116 volts on this side. And on this side, we're getting 118 to the ground. So this is a way to check. You could do the same thing with the thermostats as well. Again, be really careful. Uh, make sure the machine's well grounded. And if you don't have a ground, the third prong, you cannot do this because the machine is not grounded. So really important that you, you, your machine has a, a grounded wire and plugged in. And just to show you what I mean, you gotta have a, except this, and that ground has to work on your outlet. As you could see, we went um, over to check continuity on certain components, but also you could check the voltage to ground or check the voltage. Uh, you can also remove the two wires off the part, make sure that in the, in the volt, voltmeter mode that uh, you could check the voltage coming in. Uh, a lot of times it's this is really used uh, for checking the heating element uh, and switches and also wiring. Make sure that you have continuity between wires. Sometimes a wire melts in between and the wire goes bad. Rare, but it happens. So you may say, oh, heating elements. Just let you know, here's a bad heating element, okay? Look at the condition of it. Lime scale will make this go bad because uh, it creates an overheat or sometimes the lime scale chips off and it starts uh, eating away at the heating element and starts deforming it. So if you look, um, this is a bad heating element. So the technician checks the continuity without the power. Uh, he'll disconnect the wires, check the power going to the heating element. Here's a good heating element. So here you actually have two heating elements in one. So you kind of have to figure uh, which two belong to each other, either these two to these two or these two to these two. Okay, and one way you do that is by checking the continuity and then you know which side could be bad. It could be just one side bad, it could be the other side that's bad. So here, just a, a, a dual heating element in the same uh, part, okay? So uh, hopefully this uh, video is useful. If you have any questions, you can ask down below. I may not be able to answer everything, uh, for liability reasons, um, but I will try my best. And this is to help you self-diagnose your espresso and cappuccino machines at home. Please, if you don't feel comfortable, don't want to assume liability or responsibility, please don't do this. Send your machine to uh, a professional or a certified technician to evaluate the machine. But this is for those who want to try to self-repair, uh, you're more than welcome to try. Again, we are not responsible for any damages or personal injury. All right, if, again, any questions, ask down below. Visit our website to see these fabulous machines uh, for sale on our website. Once again, Java Gym with First Line Equipment. Thank you for watching. As always, coffee first, everything else second. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel, thumbs up and share. Have a great day.